Mm. Okay, hello everyone. Lovely to see you all again. Welcome and welcome to our last all day movie workshop. <laughs> it's been quite a journey. We've been uh, doing this for some years now and uh, it's been such a joy ride. Um, but I did also want to say that we do have uh, lots of new and exciting things coming up. And uh, in particular, we have our improv revival weekends. And this is going to be our next big weekend events that are coming. And uh, we have uh, Kristen and Eric, they're gonna share some more at the end of the workshop today. But uh, for those joining on YouTube, um, I did just wanna mention, we can put a link uh, in the chat and also uh, in the description and you can find out a bit more about that. But uh, yeah, Tribe is our online community and the online revivals are going to be our next big way of extending. And so uh, we'll have more joyful things coming up. And so we've got a wonderful movie coming today and I'm really excited for this one, I love it. <laughs> so I'm gonna pass it straight over to you now, David. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Uh, so great to be here. I know our hearts are going to be bursting wide open today with love, and we get to do it with a lot of laughter and humor along the way. I think that's uh, that's really our paradigm now. We're we're heading into the laughter paradigm. <laughs> we're we're jumping down the the laughter. Uh, you might say the laughter rabbit hole. <laughs> and we're not really coming back either. <laughs> we're, we're going down and remembering to laugh at, at the idea of separation, the very crazy, tiny, mad idea of separation. So that feels like that's the most precious thing that we can remember is always remembering to laugh with the gentle laughter of Jesus and the Holy Spirit that just sees the error and then overlooks the error. <laughs> really, that's really what forgiveness is. It's seeing beyond the error entirely. So today we have a beautiful comedy movie that's very deep and profound. Some of you know that I like to call certain movies classic movies because these are the ones you can watch over and over and feel the, the joy and the expansiveness that God is calling us to, to remember. And uh, I think this movie really kind of encapsulates everything. We'll, we'll say it encapsulates the fall from grace, the belief that you can be separate from God, and then the slow opening up of the heart from, from being closed off, from being in a state of repression and denial uh, opening more and more wider and wider and wider to that bright light and that bright love of God. And it's a journey where we have to go from the no and to the yes. And then we go from the yes into a more of a full yes. And then finally, the atonement or the correction for the error is is the final yes. It's it's just yes without no. <laughs> so some of you have followed along on uh, our movie watcher's guide to enlightenment. You know that there's a movie that we have called Waking Life. Uh, it was made by Richard Richard Linkletter, and you might want to go back and review that movie because. As he goes through the whole movie, the main character finally finds himself at a pinball machine, which with the Richard Linkletter character, he put himself in the animated movie. And basically at the pinball scene, uh, it's revealed that all of, of time, all of history is simply saying no to God. It's like God saying, are you ready to be one with me? And as long as the answer is no, then we have what seems to be a repetition of images that just seem to be coming like Groundhog Day <laughs> every day. You, you wake up, you, you comb or you brush your hair, you brush your teeth, you, know, you take your shower, you put on your clothes and you go through yet another day 
like the Beatles songs. Du, 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 du. It's just another day. Du, 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 du. It's just another day. You know, it. That's what the human condition seems to be. We just go through day after day, and in that movie, Waking Life, uh, through Lady Gregory in a dream that that uh, that Richard Linklater had, he he realizes he's told that basically all of time. All of history is just saying no to God. And in the end, we say yes. And that is, that's a, that's a matter of uh, God's will for us, is to be in the yes to happiness. But while we believe in the ego, we are constantly saying yes and no. Uh, it's kind of like that Beatles song, you know, I don't know why you say goodbye, I say hello. Hello, hello. I don't know why you say goodbye. I say hello. Ho, 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 ho. Hello. The hello is the yes. And we have to go fully into the miracle to say our final yes. There's a section in A Course in Miracles, I think it's very profound. It's called The Last Unanswered Questions, in which Jesus poses four questions. And he gives you the first one, he gives you the second one, he gives you the third one. And he says in that section, you may have answered yes to the first three, but not to the final one. This is a very important uh, section. It's called The Last Unanswered Question. And the last question, the fourth question is the last question is, do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? Do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? And what he means by that is, do I want to see with Christ's vision? Do I want to see the light because it is the truth? Do I want to end the game of deception of image, idle image making, you know, and and being caught up believing in a world of time? Do I want to end time and linear time by seeing what I denied, Christ's vision, because it is the truth? And what he says in that section is, you may have answered yes to the first three questions, but not to the last one. Because when you answer yes to the last unanswered question, you are making a definitive stand in your mind to not change your mind back to the no. <laughs> so you can, you can say yes and no to the first three, but not to the last question. The last question is really is what the atonement's all about, that you have to make a final yes to God which just means I'm not going to vacillate. I'm going to see that yes means yes and no means no. Yes to God or no to God, what's it going to be? And in the end, to find our divine innocence, to, to find and experience happiness and joy, we have to say yes to the final question, the last unanswered question. Because until we answer the last question, which is takes us into a state of constancy or constant joy, constant vision, the vision of Christ, until we answer yes to the final question, then basically what we're doing is we're, we're answering yes, but we're reserving the right to also answer no. <laughs> and, and as Jesus told us in the, the workbook, the truth is true, and only the truth is true. You have to accept both parts of the statement. Truth is true, and only the truth is true, which is meaning yes is yes, and only yes is yes. It sounds like we're in kindergarten or preschool here, but we're talking at the level of mind. We're talking at the level of mind, because as long as there's a little scrap of self-doubt, then that means we still want to reserve the right to say no to God. Jesus is really trying to convince us that, that saying no to God is not a wise decision <laughs> because God is the creator. God is the source. 
God is our life, our eternal life, our being. And to try to live apart from God is to try to say no to God and to make up an identity of flesh, an identity of persons and personalities. And, and that's where the difficulties come in. That's where all challenges come in. It's all identity. It's all self-doubt. So when we really look at this, we start to realize that this is very important, this, this decision. Now, we may complain at times that we don't feel very worthy as a human being or very uh, completely worthy as a person, and that's understandable. Jesus says, yeah, well, you can never be identified with the mask and know who you really are. So don't worry about having a better mask. Why don't you just drop the mask and, and accept who you really are? That seems to take time. That's why Jesus tells us in the course, it's a course in mind training. So he's not trying to scare us. He's trying to say that you'll start off in a state of denial and repression, denying the light and repressing the, the true love that you are, the divine love. That's okay, he says. We're fine with fake. We know it. He, I went through it too, he says. You know, I, I had to go through the same uh, temptation, the same conundrum. Fine with fake. Okay. It's a state of denial and repression. And we start by coming out of the denial and the repression by beginning to open our heart to miracles. So when we open up to be used as a miracle worker, we're saying, I want to say yes. I don't even know fully what I'm saying yes to. <laughs> I mean, when I first picked up A Course in Miracles and I, I thought, are you really calling me to be a miracle worker? And Jesus said, yes, I am. And I said, oh, I don't know if I'm qualified. <laughs> I, I didn't know if I was qualified for, for graduate school, much less <laughs> for being a miracle worker. And Jesus is like, that's what you're signing up for. That's what you're saying yes to. And it starts off with, with just those little bits of willingness to say yes during the day, like our prayer of our heart, use me, help me shine my light, help me bring a sense of comfort and blessing to the world and to everyone I meet. That's how it starts. And so every time that we seem to say yes throughout the day, that is just a little reflection of our willingness to be sincere about saying yes to God. So even if you only say yes to God, let's say three or four times during a whole day, <laughs> from morning to night, those three or four are very important yeses, because those are symbols and demonstrations of your wish to be sincere, not just to play like a game or to, you know, use this whole thing of opening to God as if it's some kind of a, a pretense, you know, because this is not a course in play of ideas. This is a course in actually living and demonstrating the miracle. So when we start off with our, our little tiny yeses, those are our little willingnesses to say, I'm sincere about this. I really don't know fully what this entails, but I am willing to just be sincere in my yes. And then as we move further, our yeses become more frequent, and then ultimately they start to become a little more consistent. And we're just beginning to get into our function of miracle working. It doesn't mean it has to look a certain way in the world, but it means that you're more consistently open-minded and more consistently willing to be used by the Holy Spirit. And then as the as the denial and the repression are undone through miraculous expression, which is a, a reflection of creative expression from heaven, through this miraculous expression, then we become more willing to go toward the big yes, to answer the final question, you know, do I do I want to see what I deny because it is the truth? 
Do, want, do I want to see pure light and love and see my true identity in Christ's vision because it is the truth, not because of some worldly reason? Uh, in the end, the, the rewards are always internal because the kingdom of heaven is within. So you don't get like a gold watch or you don't get a trophy for remembering that you're the Christ. You, you, there are no physical rewards <laughs> for this self-realization. There are no physical benefits to self-actualization. So we have to let go of these ego ideas like, what's in it for me? <laughs> because the me is the body. <laughs> And when you go into I am as God created me, you're giving up all benefits as the ego would judge benefits. People tell me there's all kinds of relationships now. You know, there's, there's heterosexual relationships, there's homosexual relationships, there's, there's, uh, there's friends with benefits we actually have to be willing to let go of all the categories and realizing that we were mistaken about all of the categories because we were mistaken about our identity being a body. <laughs> That's the one commonality of all the different categories of interpersonal relationship. The one commonality of all beliefs around sexuality is, is the body. And you may remember one of Jesus' workbook lessons is, I am not a body, I am free. I am still as God created me. So he's taking us towards a decision in the mind that happily is irreversible. <laughs> the final yes means yes for eternity. It, and it's something, it means you don't want to change your mind about your identity. You just want to accept, humbly accept it as, it as God created it. So what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of setup for today's movie, and then I'm go we're going to play a, um, we're going to play a song from the band. Anybody remember the band in the 1980s called Journey? Any Journey fans? <laughs> I'm a journey fan. <laughs> That's it. That's going to be our warm-up band today for this amazing movie. The warm-up band is Journey. And we'll play a, a song from Journey that's basically in the movie and also we'll play, it has the lyrics. So, yeah, you know, when you get to that part of the song, if if he should ever hurt you, meaning if the ego should ever hurt you, True love will never desert you. <laughs> that's that's the Holy Spirit's answer. That's journey for you. That's the journey right there. If he, the ego, should ever hurt you, true love will never desert you. And, and it's emphasized at the end of the song, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's no way that, that true love would ever desert you. The God of love doesn't abandon. The God of love doesn't reject. All of our ideas of abandonment and rejection are made up by the ego. And we believed it for a moment there. We were sucker punched. <laughs> we, were, we, were not, we weren't ready for that one. We believed in abandonment and rejection. And then we seemed to watch the, the dream play out those those crazy beliefs uh, over and over until we finally say yes to God and realize uh, that God always was love and always is love and always will be love. So our movie for today is called Yes Man. <laughs> and of course, the main star, the main character is Jim Carrey, and he plays Carl. So this is why it's so helpful, because our main character, Carl, uh, he's in pretty much denial and repression. And uh, 
actually the backstory behind the movie Yes Man is it's based on a book by Danny Wallace. There was a there was an English uh, uh, an Englishman who who named Danny Wallace who went through a breakup and he started to drift into loneliness and isolation and darkness. And he was on a bus one day over in England and one of the passengers said, you need to say yes much more often. <laughs> that's, that's how this whole movie started, was Danny Wallace was told on a bus by, by a fellow uh, traveler on the bus, you need to, to say yes more often. And so Danny Wallace began the experiment for several months uh, of, of taking the opportunity to say yes with whatever was presented to him. And he went into a state of ecstasy, <laughs> to, much to his surprise, uh, where he had been saying no to many things, he went into a, this glorious state of mind just from practicing saying yes to the opportunities that presented were presented to him. And the movie Yes Man uh, that we're going to watch today is based on the book Yes Man. So I find some of the best movies are based out of out of people's experiences where they they just have an amazing experience and they want to share it with everybody so they write a book and then you bring in probably one of the greatest comedians that we will ever know uh, let's hope that when you wake up and the angel comes you you know you get the angel of jim carrey <laughs> at the door. <laughs> As you finally remember to laugh, Jim Carrey's there to greet you at the pearly gates and go, yeah, wh what a trip. <laughs> Aren't you glad that's not real? <laughs> and, and the beautiful thing about that is, is, is that it's showing us the possibilities that there is something beyond our perceptual world that perhaps we have been mis mistaken about absolutely everything, not partially mistaken, perhaps, perhaps we were 100% mistaken about everything. Perhaps in this perceptual world, we never really knew anything. And because we never really knew anything, here's the big one, we never really understood anything about time and space. This is our problem when we read books, we read them so that we can understand. And Jesus is telling us that even with the Course, you actually have to apply the lesson so fully that you are taken, you are lifted out of the perceptual realm, first through a happy dream and then beyond into the light of, of revelation. But when we live our life as if we're a body or a person and we're trying to read to understand, or even we're doing conversations, if we're trying to use our conversations to understand something first, Jesus is gently telling us, no, forgive first and then you will understand. The forgiveness has to come first. The understanding doesn't come first. So I know many of us, we tried to understand A Course in Miracles intellectually, and let's just admit we failed on that. We have to say, okay, didn't I didn't quite get there. I failed at that. That's good. It's a good thing to fail at that because we have to forgive before we can understand. So we've tried to take the course like all of our other books. We tried to learn the course first and then apply it. And Jesus is saying, no, apply the course, and then you'll understand what I'm talking about, and you won't need the book. So this is a very comical movie today. It's from 2008, and, uh, and it comes because we put out our movie poll again, 
asking you to vote on themes. And here are the themes that you voted on to bring about this Yes Man movie, this beautiful day of joy that we're going into. Coming in number one is giving a full yes to whatever is given. So that's been our problem. We've been trying to withhold our yes. And, and when things come toward us in our perception, some of them we push away and we call them a no. <laughs> and some of them we want to welcome and embrace. But what Jesus is telling us is it's good to give a full yes to whatever is given. Because everything that we perceive in this world, in this entire cosmos, is for our awakening. Nothing is happening to us by chance. Nothing is happening by accident. And if you want to know, how can that be? It's because nothing is happening. <laughs> That's why. That's the short answer. <laughs> you might re recall that uh, Jesus says that in Lesson 132 that uh, the, this single lesson the Course attempts to teach is that there is no world. And then he says, not everyone is ready to learn this, to accept this. But when he says there's no world, he, he is literally telling us in Lesson 132 that nothing at all is happening. You, you have been hallucinating something that's not there. That's lesson five, six, and seven. I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm upset because I, I see something that is not there. <laughs> and, and finally, number seven, I see only the past. Those are the key ideas. And you can see from an egoic perspective, the ego is just like, oh, come on, that's hogwash. Obviously, things are happening. Well, it, in the ego's filter, they seem to be happening, but they're not obviously happening because they haven't. Uh, even Bill Shuckman, or <laughs> Bill Shuckman, but Helen Shuckman and Bill Thetford, they did ask Jesus at one point, how did this happen in the first place? And he had to bring it back to their perceptions and their emotions because he, he basically said, you believe that it did happen. That's your problem. You believe that separation from God is possible. You believe that graven images, you know, the Bible says, have no graven images before thy Lord thy God. You believe you not only have them, but they're happening every day, every year, over and over and over. That, that's how deep the mesmerism is. That's how deep the hypnotism. So coming in number two, the second theme that you voted for, is letting joy and playfulness lead the way. Is anybody in with me on that? I think this is a good way to just spend the rest of our life now. You know, what are your future goals? Let joy and playfulness lead the way. <laughs> Do you have any ambitions? Yes, let joy and playfulness lead the way. We are going. This may be our last all-day uh, movie workshop, but we are going into a, a we're going into the, the joy and playfulness workshop for every moment for the rest of our life. <laughs> That's a paradigm shift. <laughs> That's what we're going into. Number three: Remember that error has already been corrected. Isn't that a relaxing idea? Remember that error has already been corrected. Imagine if somebody in the world would seem to accuse you of something, accuse you of anything, and all you can see in your mind's eye is this smile saying, remember, the error has already been corrected. <laughs> Now you know how Jesus uh, faced the cross and the cru seeming crucifixion. He was aware that the error was already corrected. So, so it wasn't an extremely difficult day for him because of this awareness. Number four, 
experiencing what truly loving my brother means. We are going into the experience of the, the second commandment of the Ten Commandments, love thy neighbor as thyself, literally. See that the love that you are is the same as the love of, of your neighbor, that you really are literally the same self. And number five, accept that Jesus has perfect faith in me. Accept that Jesus has perfect faith in me. That would mean that no matter what you think you've done wrong or what you think you've done mistakenly, that Jesus' faith, the faith of the Holy Spirit, is perfect faith. There's absolutely perfect faith. So, so that means that any time the ego tries to build a case against you, against your mind, against you, just remember that that perfect faith is always there. There's always a kind, gentle smile. There's always sweet eyes looking at you. Or as the, there's a group called Bliss, uh, and they have a song, 100,000 Angels. Imagine that you're just surrounded by 100,000 angels every time you believe you've messed up, every time you believe you took a wrong turn or made a mistake. Think of the wings. That's 200,000 wings <laughs> around you, surrounding you. 200,000 white wings are around you, reminding you that you're more surrounded like you're, you're like a, a beacon of light in a, in a pile of fluffy white pillow, feather pillows, <laughs> and, and angels all around you. That's the kind of thing we have to remember when we go through this world. Because the temptation of the ego is to get down on ourselves, to feel like we, we made a wrong turn somewhere where we messed up. But today's movie will be a strong reminder of just keeping the faith and staying in the yes to the miracle. So everybody get comfortable, relax, we're going to have a song from Journey to start it off. This has got to be one of the greatest love songs because it feels like it's a love song from God to us, uh, reminding us that true love will never desert us. No matter what the appearances seem to be, true love is not going anywhere. It's always there for us. It's always there as our true reality. So. I will come back and join you during the movie. Be prepared to laugh. Uh, I, I can't think of any better way to shift into the yes than through a comedy. I think um, every time anybody is telling me something that seems to be a challenge, I just pray in my heart to see it from the eye, eyes of, of the comical. Because when we're in the comical, we cannot take anything serious, you know. That's my prayer. Show me, show me the comical version of this and be ready for that. Because it, it can be quite funny when it dawns on your mind. So enjoy the movie and I will pop in from time to time and then we'll have a, a break at the end and some prayers and questions and answers. And then, yeah, then... Uh, Eric and Kristen will come on at the very end too to uh, give us a little sneak peek of coming attractions in the summer of love. <laughs> we should have we should have a Beach Boy theme <laughs> for this summer, I think. Okay, see you all. Enjoy the movie.